All right, thank you. Uh, before I start, I've been asked to make a small announcement. Uh, the Ethereum Foundation and Uniswap are trying to fund local projects or are seeking to fund local projects. And so you can help them choose which projects to fund if you visit the Quadratic Funding booth. Um, yeah, the very nice ladies. Uh, they will show you uh, how, to, uh, how to do the, the voting uh, so that you can help them choose between uh, great projects and crazy projects. And speaking of crazy projects, I'd like to talk how Ethereum is going to trans uh, transition from vertical trees to, uh, sorry, from uh, the current Merkel Patricia tree and start using vertical trees. So I'm going to give a very quick primer on vertical trees. Um, and the idea is that Ethereum uh, currently uh, stores all of its states in the leaves. Uh, how does the clicker work here? The leaves of a tree. And uh, what, uh, so th that's a lot of data. And so you can't summarize all that data directly, like uh, add all this data directly into uh, the block. So what you do is you use a, a small cryptographic summary of uh, part of the data and you build a hierarchical structure. And the top of the structure is what goes into the block. So you don't provide all the data, but you give some guarantee, some commitment that uh, that data uh, is the correct one. And now the challenge is what happens if you want to prove that, for example, the red square belongs to the, is somehow validated by, by this information. So the way we currently do it is by uh, using a commitment technology that's called a uh, hash. And uh, it served its purpose well, but the problem with the hash is that to uh, verify a hash, you need all the data as input. So if I want to prove that this indeed contains this uh, red square, I also need to pass the green square. And then once I've got, uh, I've verified this bit, I need, to, uh, I need the sibling here, the other uh, green sibling, to verify that this was correct. And uh, in the structure that is used by Ethereum, you don't have two children per, per node, but you have 16. So uh, it, uh, for each level, you need to pass 15 siblings. And uh, that makes uh, a lot for a lot of data. And we want to start uh, making Ethereum more stateless. So we would like to, uh, people to not keep that data, just uh, grab it from, uh, from the block itself. So if we want to put all this information in blocks, uh, the blocks would be way too big. So what vertical trees do is that they replace uh, they replace uh, hashes with what's called vector commitments. That's the V for vertical. And um, what uh, the technology of vector commitment allow you to do is to just pass the information along the path. It gives you a way to prove that this is a member is uh, verified by this without passing the siblings. So the proof uh, would become much, much smaller. And this is why, we, uh, this is why we're, we're trying to, to switch to this technology. So very quick summary of changes. Um, like, like I said, we replace uh, hashes with a type of commitment that's called a polynomial commitment. We add the proofs to the block. We add all the data that you need uh, to, for, to verify the block to the block. And then, because the data, uh, because you don't no longer need to have so many, uh, like the number of siblings uh, in a tree does no longer affects you, we increase the, the number of siblings to 255. And uh, that makes for a, more, a much more shallow um, tree, which means the path itself, uh, itself also becomes smaller, shorter. And as a result, the proof gets, uh, gets smaller. And another big difference uh, is that instead of uh, currently we're differentiating accounts from uh, the, s the contract data, which is called storage, uh, we just um, instead we, we like the tree becomes agnostic. All it sees is 32 byte values. Doesn't matter where to it what, what they are. And um, the last significant change is the, the gas. Instead, uh, until now, the gas was a gear that uh, limiting the amount of, uh, of leaves that were at, at the bottom, uh, make it more expensive to add more leaves. Uh, now, uh, we just try to make the block smaller. So every time uh, you need to add something to, to the block proof, uh, it will cost you more, but uh, storage is no longer really the, the target. Um, so just a quick uh, update on the, the current state of uh, of the implementation. There is a testnet. 
uh, that exists. Uh, you can reach it at this address. I've been told the faucet is broken, of course, as uh, should happen during any demo. But uh, yeah, apart from that, it's working well. Um, and uh, yeah, we have uh, basically two implementations that don't really uh, didn't really manage to talk to each other yet, but we, we understand the problem, so it will be fixed uh, soon. So let's talk about the transition now. Um, the, the problem of the transition is that you, you have a very large data structure using one proof format, if you will, and you need to convert it to a different format. And uh, on top of that, this, uh, this, um, this new format is a bit more CPU intensive. So uh, to do the transition, uh, it's, going to, it's going to require a lot of resources, and that is the, the, biggest, uh, the biggest problem. Um, yeah, one thing I wanted to add is that um, it's not scheduled for, uh, like, uh, right after the merge, there's going to be a, an intermediate uh, uh, fork in between, uh, because we need to, to reduce, to, the, to remove self-destruct. And the reason why we do this is because uh, I was saying uh, we no longer make the difference between an account and uh, storage, so you can't really uh, know what, uh, uh, what storage an account has, so you, you can't really destroy accounts anymore. Um, so, yeah, we, we're dependent on this feature. So, right, uh, explaining the issues, the first one is memory. Uh, you can more or less fit all, Ethereum, all of Ethereum data on a, on a like, sizable disk, but no one has enough memory to store everything. So if you want to store this structure that is currently on disk here on, into, the, into RAM, it just doesn't fit. So what you need to do is instead, um, because uh, one, uh, uh, because for example, this, this structure here can be summarized by this one, by this, uh, by this node, you just replace it by its commitment and then it fits. Um, but the problem is, uh, it's called thrashing. What if I write a new value here? Um, I, I, this node is not currently present in memory, it's just, a, it's, it's just a cryptographic summary. So what I need is to make some space by replacing some subtree by its, uh, by its uh, cryptographic summary, if you will. Then load the previous state of the tree, and finally do the write. And that's quite intensive, there's a lot of communication between the disk, uh, the RAM, etc. So uh, that's, that's called thrashing. And you can see in one of the early tests, uh, this represents the memory usage, and the, the memory usa usage goes really high, and then I hit the limit of the memory, so I have to uh, make a lot, of, uh, a lot of space in RAM, and you can see this is the, the growth of the database every time there's a memory being freed, there's a bit of a spike in the database. Um, so clearly there's also, uh, like the, the database is more efficient at storing data. Um, there's a lot of optimizations, but the problem is, is really vis uh, visible here. Um, you need to, to empty memory re really often. Uh, sorry. So we have four proposals I'm going to go over. Uh, the first one, is, I would say, the simplest, also the most unacceptable. It's, about, it's just saying, okay, the conversion is going to take a week to do, for example. Uh, for a week, we just give uh, empty blocks and so, so that the, uh, a node has the resources and, uh, available to, to perform the transition. So that's why it's also known as Rollup Appreci Appreciation Week, because for a week, all you can do is use rollups and hope uh, no one is going to, to try to to do anything nasty. Um, so it has a lot of advantages, let's be honest, uh, if, you, <laughs> if you omit the, the, visibility, the, the usability one, uh, which is all the resources on the network are dedicated to, to this. But yeah, use, uh, usability-wise, it's not really uh, recommended. So there's another uh, possibility, which is uh, to freeze the, the tree at some point and then clients will only store the delta for a period of time to give some, uh, only a limited amount of users with a, with, a, with a lot of computing power the time to do the translation. And then the translation, once it's done, it's verified, it's spread over the network, and then clients apply their diffs to it. Uh, it's nice because 
not every client has to uh, has to do it. Not every node has to do it. Uh, the problem is that you um, you need to f make sure that uh, the result of the conversion that you are given is valid, and that means you need to solve this problem at the the verification happens at the social level, uh, which is not as good as uh, as an alg algorithmic uh, solution. Um, there's another solution that is a bit similar. It's called uh, I, I, I call it stateless sync. And the idea is that because the proof will end up in blocks eventually, might as well use this fact. Uh, sorry, because the data, the conver the data you're going to to use will will be present in block, uh, you can reuse that uh, idea for the conversion. So uh, you download uh, instead of storing the diffs, uh, instead of each client storing the diff, what happens is that the people doing the conversion also produce uh, the proof. Um, with each block, and uh, clients, basically clients have to trust even more, but they have to do even less work. Um, but the, the issue is still there that those who produce the, the conversion, they still have to, to track the network, and that's, uh, that's a bit complicated. The third solution is the one I'm going to detail a bit more. It's called the overlay tree, and the idea is that you freeze uh, the tree um, in place, the, the Merkle Patricia tree, so the current format. You freeze it in place and then you start with a fresh tree. So the, um, and then other people can do the conversion and there can be some merging. Uh, and I'm going to explain that uh, with pictures. So you decide that at, at a given block, uh, the Merkle Patricia tree is frozen. So uh, those triangles are supposed to represent an M for, for Merkle. And um, yeah, you say at this block, this is the last tree that, ever, that will ever be produced. And then the next block, you start with a fresh root, so it's an inverted triangle for vertical. Um, and when you need to, when you write to the tree, you write to that new root. So the, the old root here doesn't change. So what you can do uh, thanks to that is after a while, because uh, when you're sure that there will not be any reorgs, you can delete the internal node because you, ca you consider that, uh, that all, this, uh, all this structure here that is needed to verify the adequation between the data and the block, uh, yeah, it's, it's correct. Otherwise, you wouldn't have made it that far. Um, so you free some space. And then the question happens, what if you want to access a uh, location that used to be present uh, in the old tree, but is no longer present. Well, that's the problem of this approach. First, you hit the, the vertical tree, and you hit the vertical tree because it's uh, short, is presumably smaller, um, so that's why you go there first. And then, if you don't find it, you go to uh, a key value store or the, the Moco Patricia tree. And then you can make some improvements. You can decide, well, because this data was present, I might as well, uh, like in the old, uh, in the old uh, uh, storage, I might as well bring it to the new storage if I'm asked for it next time. And you can even delete it from the, uh, from the, old, uh, from the old store. Um, right, and so some uh, versions of this, uh, of this method assume that the, the tree will be frozen forever, but what can happen is that while all the, the chain progresses, you can also perform the conversion offline, and then when the, per, uh, the conversion is, uh, is performed, uh, you just merge everything, and you can merge everything, like maybe uh, block by block. You, each block, you add more, let's say, uh, 10,000 leaves from the, oops, sorry, from the old, uh, from the old tree uh, into the new one, and until finally you have no data left. Um, yeah, so that's one of the methods. Uh, I would say the biggest drawback is that it takes roughly four months to complete, but uh, during uh, those four months, at every block, you can verify that everybody is synced because you know exactly um, what the status of their, uh, of their vertical tree is and what the status of their Merkle Patricia tree is. Um, so that's the advantage. Uh, the problem is, uh, of course, that you're in lockstep with the smallest machine on the network because you only transfer, for example, uh, 10, uh, 10 leaves, 1,000 leaves, whatever the smallest machine can support without uh, coming out of sync. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't know if there's time for a question. 
four minutes for a question. Uh, but before that, uh, what I invite you to do is uh, check the, the test net. Very, very uh, interesting. And uh, if you have, uh, I, I also make some threads about uh, vertical tree questions from time to time, so it, it might be interesting to, to check that out as well. Okay, anyone in the audience have questions for Guillaume? Early lunch. Oh, no. um, <laughs> I um, was reading an article from Vitalik, okay. I think he's, it's an old article, where he said that because the vertical tree uses polynomial commitments, it's, it uses homomorphic encryption to make yeah. it more efficient, and that it could be susceptible to quantum magic. To? Uh, quantum magic. Ah, quantum magic, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will need to scale back to some stark Merkel. I'm not sure. Um, I didn't understand it. But mm -hmm. the question is, should we approach the, the Merkel route or do we bet that it will happen and we should go another route? Yeah, if, if this happens, if quantum magic happens, um, whether or not uh, it's likely to happen is, of course, everybody's opinion. Um, but, um, yeah, if it happens, we will have to switch to a different, uh, uh, a different technology. It's, less, it's, less, it's not quantum secure, that's, that's true. Uh, but you can... Uh, anyway, the vertical tree is always one step. Uh, we want to snark it all, uh, eventually. So there will be more upgrades. I'm not really worried about that. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, okay, Peter. Troll alert. <laughs> be kind or be really, really trolly. Uh, so question, uh, during uh, the transition, you have both Merkle trees and vertical trees. And synchronization-wise, then, would this, a synchronization be expected to sync both at the same time? So depending on the method, that was surprisingly nice, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, depending on the method, uh, it might, uh, like for example, the overlay method, uh, synchronization is expected to, to happen on both, on both sides, yes. Uh, when it comes to, uh, to offline, uh, yeah, um, you need to download one, uh, one big um, uh, chunk of data once, but then you need to apply the delta. So uh, synchronization would force us to also download the data. So in that case, we would uh, disallow synchronization for a period of time. I think that would be the best, uh, the best approach. Does that answer your question, Peter? Beautiful. Okay, I think we're, we're done for time. Thank you very, very much, Guillaume. Thank you. <laughs>